Well, welcome all, and welcome Mr. Barry Peatling to the Barry Peatling Football Show. And welcome to you, Colin Sutcliffe, and all my viewers around the world and in the state. It's a very cold day in Chelsea. I don't yep. know what's going on in this weather. Yep, crazy I'm weather. I was on two days ago, and now I've got my overcoat on. How many hits are you up to? Uh, 42,080. 42,000. Average 120, nearly, uh, nearly 120 every day in the last two or three months. Hmm. Very so impressive. the world's and the Mexicans and the Egyptians are watching, mm -hmm. and even the Iraqis. You're keeping them from... Keeping them quiet. Yeah, yeah, keeping them quiet from doing things that we don't even want to speak about. And the Egyptians are all... Mm. Uh, but keep watching the Egypt, Egypt people and the Iraqis and the, yep. the other mob. ISIL. ISIL, they're, they're watching too. Iran. The ISIL are watching That's too. That's where um, Saddam Hussein kept his um, spices. Did he? In Iraq. Good mate of mine, Saddam. Yeah. Mm. Um, let's have a look at. Oh, we're going to look at. a bit of just talk there. Yes, Bomb Beach versus Mornington, but firstly, Barry. Oh, yeah, I got that out again. Just re uh, refresh the war. memories of all these awards I was getting back in them days. That was in Sheffernan, 1966. And this it's, is when you were heading the awards? I was heading, but I got pipped the last game, Colin. Would you believe a fellow played for Collingwood? Ray Willett, we picked it in the 60s. Remember a fellow called Ray Willett played for Collingwood? Uh huh. But he came back to, uh, to play with Marut and won the medal. And beat him by two votes. Yeah, he's only got... He only got and I nearly won a goal kick in there too. Well, has Ray only got 26 goals? Who? Ray Willett. Willett, yeah. Well, I, well, I got 40-something, didn't I? Uh, yeah, you got a few, 43. I finished that uh, one in second, that goal kick. And, and there's the other one over there. They give, there's a little bit of a story about Barry on the right-hand side yep. there. Yep, yep. What's that about? Over here. On the sure, yeah, we got it, yep. He was a goat all well, over it. That was, it. They, they a, that was Noel Hussey who wrote that story. Showing your class. Noel Hussey wrote, used to write for the Shepherd and Time back in the days. He won a stall gift in 1968. Oh, okay. Stall gift. Very good runner. And he was a very good fan of mine too. So that's a little bit of uh, sports move of the week stuff. Yeah, it was 43 um, goals I kicked at, yeah? 43 goals. No, I finished up with 50, so that was about four games before I finished the season. Okay. So I, run, I was runners up in the Wimmer League. And runs up in the Golden Valley. Mm. Not bad for the road, was it? Not too bad, not too shabby. <laughs> Let's talk about the Bomb Beach versus Morning. Yes, it was a very extraordinary game down the Frankston Park. Even though I went down there on the Saturday, I thought the game was, there, the game was on Saturday. Because mm. there and there was no cars. I thought, well, what's going here? But the game was on yesterday. Now, did you get the time clock fixed, Barry? The time clock's there. Mm -hmm. The only trouble is it's not working. They didn't have any power on there. You wouldn't believe what's going on down that ground. So it's good that they got it ready for the finals. Well, with a bit of luck, they might get some batteries or get the electric power charged up. We might get the time clock. We mm. had a little fellow sitting up in the little corner. And he's got and he's putting up two, three because people say two, three minutes to go. This is back in the old dark ages. Can you believe it? I can't. Believe right it. behind me. I can't believe it. Uh, well, you hand remember. signals. Yeah, it was hand signals. Can you believe it's it? like we're living in the 17th century. Well, it's back in the 1920s. That's what they should do in the 1920s. I find it. And funny. they'd ring a bell. Ring a bell. Well, they didn't ring a bell. <laughs> Some guy with a whistle. Smart, smart, <laughs> smart up you Franks and people, I tell you what. But they uh, had a very poor crowd. So they don't pro might not have electricity down there. They mightn't have paid the bill. No. But they're... Uh, oh, the crowd? Tell us about the crowd pathetic. conditions. Pathetic crowd. You know why? Because no one, no one, none of the Mornington people mm. go to watch the game. They just sit home and all sit up in the sand and well, Frankston would have been pretty close to No, they don't, go. they don't go. They don't travel the Mornington people. I don't know why. Crazy. That was uh, about half the size of, of the crowd the week before. That's unbelievable. But next week it'll be chock a block. Chock a block. They've got, the, got the superstars Frankston YCW playing Mornington. But they'll. And I'll tell you something about the game in a minute, but. Mm. Uh, YCW, oh, this is an early prediction, Colin. YCW win the grand final by between 8 and 15 goals. Wow. Well, that's a pretty big prediction, Barry. Oh, they will. They Very will. big prediction. They will. They will. Uh, well, let's get into the first half then, Barry. Well, Bond Beach started very well. Mm -hmm. um, of course, S. McDonald, number three, five goals in the first half. Mm -hmm. Three in the first quarter. Two in the second. They're good, is it? He's good. They were going easy, uh, but this big ruckman for uh, he might this big ruckman for Mornington, number twenty-seven, Michael mm. Gay. Uh, very strange name, Gay. Mo Michael What's his Gay. Name? Yeah. Gay. Mm -hmm. you know what a Gay is? Mm -hmm. He uh, he he's nearly the same size as uh, 
Ashley Young, but he was a good over him, but he he controlled the game. Mm. Number twenty seven. Bit of a power. He was going all right, but they. Uh, I went in rooms at half time at the Bond Beach rooms, and everyone was talking to Gary Carpenter. He started all right, but he, he finished up fading out. And uh, what was the score at half time? You know. I'll give that score in a minute. But I went yeah. in the rooms, and I, was, and I was talking to him, and he, I said, "I think you've got the chocolate." He actually, "Yeah, we're going easy." The score at half time was nine five. Mon Bond Beach two. Well, he's a pathetic three goals too. Oh, so the game was over at half time. Uh, Seven no. goals. Patting each other on the back. That's all. I think they might have thought the game was mm. over. But in, in the second half, they come out, and all of a sudden, they kicked three goals in three minutes. Well, right. But, but the, they've got some very ordinary players. They're back in it. So they sort of uh, Bomb Beach got ahead of themselves. Well, they did because mm. that, they scored. Oh, sco- I mean, the, the full time scores. Uh, 12, uh, 14 goals week, and they've kicked 11 in the second half and Bond Beach has kicked with a, a pathetic 3 goals So they lost by a couple of goals At least 3 goals yeah. That's got to be the biggest, I mean last year in the grand final there were 6, nearly 7 goals in front of EDS at half time too Bond Beach, Same, Bond same Beach. scenario That's sad and I mean, After the game the, the fellows could have dug a hole and they would have just that's in pretty it. bad, isn't it? They should have won it easy, and they lost it. Well, they were going to win by... I thought the, I said the snake... He'll stand alongside me again, as usual. I, I said that... He's watching every week, too, now, mm-hmm. snake. I said, they're going to win by 15 goals, these snakes. Well, it looks like it, doesn't it? But uh, football, a very strange game. But that's two finals in a row. Bond Beach has thrown a game away. Crazy. Oh, well, give us the, um, the goal kickers, Barry. I'll tell you something about mm-hmm. the... Uh, in the... This, in the third quarter, they kicked seven goals straight, mm-hmm. Mornington. But that fella, that guy, was he was killing him in the ruck. He he, he was he knew he's got his SDMs in the palm of to these Rovers. But it was incredible. He thought, I can't, I still can't get over it. I reckon the Von Beach fellas, I mean, last year they would have been felt like knock themselves over because they, they, they threw that grand final away. Crazy stuff. Exactly the same thing. So they kicked a few goals. Um, what, what are the goal kickers then, Dave? The goal kickers for. Uh, well, the, the leading full forward of the competition, Calder, mm-hmm. he, he had two percent, but he finished up kicking two goals in the last quarter. Right. I mean, they, they, after half time, they uh, there was no stars. From they all put in. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the goal kickers were here. Got kick, kick two, and Francine, that next Carlton player, yep. kicked two, and the rest were all singles. But the Bond Beach McDonald just kicked a lazy six goals mm-hmm. straight. Yeah. Straight. Oh, he held that team together. He is a side, mm. mate, I'll tell you. Uh, who else kicked one? There was a couple of Sykes and Hugo kicked one each, but no, it was. Uh, I still can't get over how they got beat. Give us the group of best players, Barry. Right, and there, there wasn't very many good players come because the first half they had hardly no one going. But Gay, of course, he's played with mm. Mick Nolan's son. Of, you remember Mick Nolan? He used to play for North Melbourne? Yeah. The big fat fella? Yeah. He had two of his, three of his sons playing. Wow. He's one of his sons, Dale Nolan, he got second one in the best players. And Brothel, uh, what's his name? He's got a funny name, and Clement. Now, there wasn't very, very many, many good players, but in the last quarter and a half, they all just put in. It's a good team effort. All right, well, give us the votes then. One vote. The votes were. I give one vote to Rebacini. He played a top game mm. in the last. He had ten possessions in the last quarter. It, mm. it, was, it was the only fellow was putting in. Two votes. Michael. Uh, two votes to Michael Gay, the big ruckman from uh, Mornington. And of course, three votes to Shane McDonald. Mm. In the in the losing oh, side. Well, for sure. He, Dominant he, player on the was, ground. I mean, that first half, a bit like the Bay, David Bowley last week mm. for uh, Mornington for uh, ICW, but yep. he, he he got a. Brilliant goal in the last quarter. Got them, got them back within three points, but they just couldn't... Uh, but I oh know he's a superstar. Right? So look out for the morning. He's had 25 possessions, for God's sake. Yeah, look out for the mornings and game next week. Is that right? That's on next Sunday, yeah. That's next Sunday. I actually went to the wrong day. Went to the day, grand the wrong day. Went so that's the, next uh, Sunday. That's the grand final. Sunday. Is that the grand final? Yeah. Hmm. Well, just checking, and that's YCW versus Mornington. Yep. Very good. You get there early, because Bowley will probably kick about 12 goals next week. Right. See how far I'm wrong. Twelve goals you'll kick. Fair enough. They haven't got a fall back. All right then, Barry. Give us the uh, highlights package. Well, not too much package, but uh, the turnaround for Mornington to get what they've done is... I still, it's incredible. 
That looks like a very ordinary side in the first time. And how they've cut, they must have, they must have been had, had a nice drink of something fizzy to give them yeah, s- third up or something. Was, um, possibly they might have had some injections or <laughs> peptides. No, it was, uh, as I said before, it was just like last year's grand final. The, 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 the turnaround from mm. being seven goals in front of EDS. They might be getting a reputation bomb each. Well, cho- it's choking, not bad. Choking. Last year, they were seven goals in you don't get beat when you're seven goals in front. Chokers. Mm. I don't know what's going on, but it's... Uh, Sometimes it happens. I team don't know. Oh, we've got this one, or oh, we might lose it. Well, the coach is leaving next... He's leaving, it's his last game, because mm. he's, he's, he's retiring. He's not, yeah. It hasn't been sacked, he's retiring. Any other highlights? Yeah, of course, McDonald's ex- exhibition in the first half. of kicking five. Some of those goals he's kicking are about 60 metres out, Colin. 60 metres. He just got the most powerful thighs, and he just. But in, in the last quarter, the coach, they were getting beaten, and they've left him on the half, and all of a sudden, they put him on the ball with about four minutes to go. I mean, I said to Snake, he got McDonald down on a half forward flank, half back flank, the, guy, the ball's up there, get him up there. Maybe they're resting him? No, look, some coaches get strange ideas. Mm. I mean, a bit like our, coach, our ex-coach. Roy, some weird ideas about it. Start your. your, your your good players on the wing or starting one half foot. Mm. But anyway, that, but that exhibition of uh, McDonald was uh, as good as you can. Well, he's entertained. I told you he's entertained so. himself. Mm. He does entertain everyone, including me. And I don't know what. Uh, he'd be devastated. I mean, he's kicked six goals out of the sides, ten goals or something. Mm. I mean, but he's kicked the score in the first half. Mm. No, but that was. At, uh, as I said before, Morning didn't have many. They didn't have many stars in the last half. They all put in. So your prediction for next week, just to reiterate that? They'll win easy. Why should they? They'll win. They won't give uh, 60 to 100 points. Nah, I reckon 10 goals upwards. Yeah. 10 goals upwards. That's 60 points upwards, yeah. So I had a TAB on that. I might go and have something on. No, they probably do. Don't think so. Not on. So that's next week. You'll be there live um, and reporting on the match for Monday. There'll be a big crowd next week. Bigger crowd next week, okay. hopefully. Let's get you a bit earlier. Too. Let's get into the AFL a little bit. Yeah, well. Port Adelaide. There's another turn up, too. Yeah. How'd they ever beat Fremantle? I did. watched the first half and I went come back later on their intro. Determined. They got young guys, they got experience now, and I'd, I'd really hope. Now they who are they play in Sydney, are they? No, they, they play. Hawthorne. Hawthorne. North Melbourne play Sydney. Hawthorne at the MCG. It's yeah. like Friday night, isn't it? Friday afternoon, late afternoon. Friday afternoon? 4.45. F- Friday? It's so if Port Adelaide win, they can catch a flight back that night. Oh, they're going to gonna fit in with a uh, train schedule? Yep. You've got to be joking. No, so they have the, the full seven days at home. Oh, what's a half a day? Friday at 4.45? Yes. Fr- no, s- s- Saturday at 4.45. Ah, oh, Friday night's the other yeah, game. Yeah, Friday night's the other game, and Saturday 4.45. Twilight game. Well, I think Hawthorne's about a dollar eighty. I wouldn't mind having something on there. I'd like to, to see win the flag. Port Adelaide beat Hawthorne. That'd be nice. they got the d- flash. That, that uh, little forward pocket player, a bit like Rowley. What's his name? He kicked four ne- goals? Ne- need, need, Neald. Neald no. or something. Oh, no, he's a... What's his name? Rocky, Rocky Neald. But they got some good young players at... Uh, oh, Wingard. That's him, Chad Wingard. Mm. He's a su- he's very similar to Rowley. Very good. Four very goals. tough. Tough. And takes a big mark. But so I'm what's the prediction? We've got North Melbourne, Sydney. Is that in Sydney? No, nah, North Melbourne. No one, they won't stand up to so that. So Sydney? Well. Sydney and North Melbourne, I'll say. Great uh, yeah, that makes sense. But I'm going to go for an upset. I'm going to go for North and Port. Kiss of death. If... I, can't, I reckon this Brent Harvey might get off. They're all saying he's going to get two weeks. I reckon he'll oh, get off. He, I think he's been um, done. Official word, he's been done for a week. He's a superstar. He was mm. killing him. But he, the brain must snap because there was a stupid thing to do to him. But uh, So we look forward to that next week. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be watching. Prediction. Yeah. We'll be watching and give you uh, results. Any Cheerios, Barry? Yeah, i got some Cheerios. I always have Cheerios this little show here. Of course, it's here out of PH and Shandy and Carlos and Snake and of course uh, Jerry I was talking to Phil a few days ago and Jerry 
Pretty guy's just telling Jerry some of the stories back in their dark days, back in the 50s and 60s. Jerry, all those stories Phil P.H. is telling you, they're true because I was there. Live. And we, uh, things we, we, things we done back in them days, it's, uh, I don't know how we're still here, but we, they're all true, Jerry, so believe it from me. <laughs> what about Annie and all them? Oh, you know? uh, Annie, they had the three days of uh, brownness. Oh. Brownness. How can you put up with that? that I don't know. Did, I mean, we only put up with an hour blackout, and they have yeah. um, two, two days and... Now apart from that, uh, yeah, we, we were we were crazy, Jerry, in, in them days. You better believe it. I said that to you. You better believe it. It was true. But uh, we're still there. Phil P. H. and Bazavoy are still there. And of course, I'm curious from India, the Philippines, United States, Saudi Arabia, United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Mexico. Some of our overseas. What's going on? You must be like You must be putting your guns down anyway while you're mm. watching the. What's my YouTube? Guns and knives. And choppers and everything. Mm. So, all, all to all those people and everybody else, it's, that's all we got for today. Yep, that's goodbye for me. And bye for now. See you next week.